A former co-founder of OpenAI has raised a new $1 billion seed round to build safe superintelligence. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the big questions surrounding the firing and then ultimately rehiring of Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI last year, was whether there was some advance, some technical innovation, some breakthrough that had happened that had spooked some folks inside OpenAI creating a rift between them and Sam Altman in terms of how they would think about releasing that breakthrough onto the world. The way that this was popularized was a phrase, what did Ilya see? Ilya was, of course, referring to Ilya Sutskever, one of the original co-founders of OpenAI and the company's chief scientist. On November 24th, as the whole thing was happening, A16Z's Mark Andreessen wrote, seriously though, what did Ilya see? Elon Musk responded, yeah, something scared Ilya enough to want to fire Sam. What was it? For months, this conversation persisted, despite the fact that all the people involved with OpenAI said that it wasn't an issue of safety that caused their firing of Sam Altman, and a board review after that found the same thing, the question never really went away. And whatever the answer to the question was, it seemed pretty clear to many that Ilya was probably not long for OpenAI. Even though he had dramatically switched sides and come back to working with the company and supporting Sam Altman, he was largely absent for the following six months. Indeed, it was almost exactly six months until May when Ilya announced on Twitter, after almost a decade, I've made the decision to leave OpenAI. He continued, the company's trajectory has been nothing short of miraculous, and I'm confident that OpenAI will build AGI that is both safe and beneficial. It was an honor and a privilege to have worked together, and I will miss everyone dearly. So long and thanks for everything. I'm excited for what comes next, a project that is very personally meaningfully to me, about which I will share details in due time. A little over a month later, we started to get some details. Ilya announced that he was starting a new company called Safe Superintelligence, or SSI. The company announced itself with a post on X, Superintelligence is within reach. Building Safe Superintelligence, SSI, is the most important technical problem of our time. We've started the world's first straight-shot SSI lab with one goal and one product, a Safe Superintelligence. It's called Safe Superintelligence, Inc. SSI is our mission, our name, and our entire product roadmap, because it is our sole focus. Our team, investors, and business model are all aligned to achieve SSI. We approach safety and capabilities in tandem, as technical problems to be solved through revolutionary engineering and scientific breakthroughs. We plan to advance capabilities as fast as possible, while making sure our safety always remains ahead. This way, we can scale in peace. Our singular focus means no distraction by management overhead or product cycles, and our business model means safety, security, and progress are all insulated from short-term commercial pressures. The founders of the company included not only Ilya, but prominent AI investor Daniel Gross, as well as AI scientist Daniel Levy. Now, upon the announcement, there was some skepticism. AI safetyist Eliezer Yudkowsky wrote, If you have an alignment plan I can't shoot down in 120 seconds, let's hear it. So far, you have not said anything different from the previous packs of disaster monkeys who all said exactly this almost verbatim, but I'm open to hearing better. Still, by and large, the sentiment was excitement, with more than a fair bit of speculation around just how much this company was going to raise. The sense around the AI space was that Ilya likely had a blank check. And now, a couple months later, that certainly appears to be the case. Today, once again, they tweeted, SSI is building a straight shot to safe superintelligence. We've raised $1 billion from NFDG, A16Z, Sequoia, DST Global, and SV Angel. The announcement also came with an exclusive in Reuters about what the company wanted to build. Additional details shared in Reuters, the $1 billion came at apparently around a $5 billion valuation, adding in perhaps the most duh sentence I've ever read, the funding underlines how some investors are still wanting to make outsized bets on exceptional talent focused on foundational AI research. The rest of the Reuters article doesn't have that much in the way of details. SSI is saying that it plans to partner with cloud providers and chip companies to fund computing power needs, but hasn't decided who it will work with. Reuters also writes, Sitzgever was an early advocate of scaling, a hypothesis that AI models would improve in performance given vast amounts of computing power. The idea and its execution kicked off a wave of AI investment in chips, data centers, and energy, laying the groundwork for generative AI advances like ChatGPT. Ilya says he will approach scaling in a different way than his former employer without sharing details. He said, Everyone just says scaling hypothesis. Everyone neglects to ask, what are we scaling? Some people can work really long hours and they'll just go down the same path faster. It's not so much our style. But if you do something different, then it becomes possible for you to do something special. So basically, there is a sense of some different approach that they're going to take, although what that different approach is remains obscure or hidden at least to the public. In terms of immediate reactions, some of the discussion was about technical debates. Karim Kaya writes, Ilya Sitzgever and Daniel Levy disagree with Jan LeCun, the chief AI scientist at Meta, on the idea that superintelligence can't be achieved with autoregressive models. A significant new wave is approaching, set to push the boundaries of the current architecture. Others pointed out that this probably had something to say about the current state of AI funding. Accelerate Harder writes, 
If you're wondering if AI investment is drying up, here's a $1 billion raise for a company that probably doesn't even have a demo yet. Sure, it's about the team, but that's still quite a data point. Mark Andreessen said we at A16Z are delighted to be on the SSI team and enthusiastic about the mission and strategy. Now, I want to talk about this idea, as reiterated here by Andrew Curran, that SSI's only goal and product is superintelligence. For many, this idea that you could raise a billion dollars on a $5 billion valuation just on the strength of a team will seem ludicrous. They will take it as a sign that the AI bubble is reaching some sort of peak. However, I think that there is a fundamental bifurcation in the way that people are looking at the AI space, particularly when it comes to AGI or superintelligence. On the one hand are those who view AI through a traditional business lens of needing to have a return on investment. This is where we get the type of analysis expressed in Sequoia's AI $600 billion question, although I will note that Sequoia was listed among the SSI investors. In any case, the idea here is that the big tech hyperscalers have spent a huge amount building out AI infrastructure and are significantly in the hole on that investment, at least a half trillion dollars. On the flip side, though, are those who think that the opportunity is so large that the possibility of winning that dwarfs any cost right now. As summed up by VC Sarah Tavel in a recent blog post, if you're a big stack player like Meta, Microsoft, Google, or any of the other foundation model pure plays, you have no choice but to keep raising your bet. The prize and power of winning is too great. If you blink, you are left empty-handed watching someone else count your chips. It's likely hundreds of billions will be destroyed and trillions earned. Later, she writes, The prize is theoretically so large, and if a clear winner emerges, their market opportunity so uncapped, you have to keep increasing your bet. This, I think, is the simple logic behind all of this investment. It's as simple as trillions of dollars of upside, handicapped to the possibility that any particular team wins. One of the things that I think is most interesting about SSI's approach is that while many are wondering how they're ever going to return on investment when they say they won't have any sort of business model or commercial distractions, I actually wonder if some of the investors are sitting there thinking to themselves that that lack of distraction is actually the optimal way to pursue AGI. While XAI, Google, Meta, and Microsoft are all messing around with quarterly reports and the fickle vagaries of Wall Street expectations, SSI blissfully ignores any sort of commercial pressure. There's a certain logic there that I think people are missing. Then again, the question is where will the next billion dollars, or really the next $10 billion come from? As we've discussed recently, even having raised $13 or $14 billion at this point, OpenAI is likely heading back to the well for more. Will SSI be able to raise similar size funds? Or, because they're not planning on releasing a ChatGPT competitor, will their costs be dramatically lower? There are all these really interesting questions that to me keep coming back to the idea that a team that's totally unencumbered by any sort of commercial pressure or consumer product pressure might actually be in a better position to win this space. But of course, we're just going to have to wait and see. In any case, it's clear that they have some resources to go after this new mountain, as Ilya called it, and it will be very interesting to see what they come up with. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.